Hello everyone. In my early 20s, I had a great experience with Jesus Christ. To this day, I wish that I could say that my testimony was, I went seeking Jesus and I found Him. Unfortunately, my testimony is one that came to a place of me seeking what my flesh wanted. My fleshly nature lured me away from my Christianity. At the age of 12, I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. However, I grew up in a Christian home where, for the most of it, my Christianity, my personal Christianity, was a set of rules that I had to obey. And I felt really good about those that I could. The unfortunate thing about that was because I could obey the law, I felt that everyone else that could not, like for instance, if my friend in school drank and smoked, you know, I condemned them and judged them because I was better. In my early 20s, I came to a place where everything that I saw everyone else do came to me in the, the lure of my own evil desires. And the unfortunate thing is that I fell into the trap of what the demonic had waiting for me. See, my own judgment led to me being judged in that way. Now, I'm thankful that that happened because when that side of my fleshly nature was revealed to me and I realized that I had no way out, that's when I found Jesus. Unfortunately, I found the demonic first in the sense of that I prayed and asked Jesus to reveal to me what I was busy with. Now, that evening, and I can't give you the full testimony in the sermon, but that evening, what happened was I saw Jesus face to face after having had a really dark experience with these evil forces. They lured me away from my Christianity. I called out to God and said, help me please and show me what I'm busy with. And in that moment, something supernatural happened. But a few moments later, when I faced Jesus, I realized that my faith was starting to lack. Now, something that I needed very desperately at that stage of my life was a very, very big missing piece in my Christianity because that evening I received that. And that was the full gift of the Holy Spirit because in me calling out to God, asking for help against these demonic forces, Jesus in me became a reality. And this is what I want to speak to you about. I want to speak to you about how God, through more than two decades now, have journeyed with me in my Christian life and asked of me to tell everyone about the full message of the gospel so that we could have a gospel-centered life. The unfortunate thing today is what I see is unfortunately that many people add the gospel to their lives. And I want to read you the statement. The true convert does not receive the gospel as an addition to his previous life, but as an exchange for it. See, the, the thing that we need to recognize about the gospel is that the true gospel is the message of God becoming man and Jesus dying in our place, not so that he could just forgive our sins. Yes, that as well. He reconciled everything back to himself, back to original intent. The greatest news of it all is that Jesus sent us the exact same spirit that rose him from the dead, his own spirit. Let me read you Galatians 4 verse 4 to 7 in the New International Version. But when the set time had fully come, God sent the Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, listen to this, God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts. The Spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are His child, God has made you also an heir. This is so important to Christianity. And, and the unfortunate thing about this is that today, people go to church instead of being the church. And so when I speak about Jesus in me, maybe my revelation gave me great insight as to what my missing link was. 
It was that I missed the person of the Holy Spirit. Paul in, Eph in Ephesus spoke about this. So in Ephesians, he teaches about this. And, and, and this prayer in Ephesians 3, verse 16 to 17, stands out. I pray that out of His glorious riches, He may strengthen you with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. See, brother and sister, in Jesus Christ, this is the encouragement that I want to motivate you in the truth, into the truth of Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. That as a Christian, we are not supposed to live for Jesus. We're not even supposed to live with Jesus. We are supposed to allow Jesus to live through us. That is the main aim of Christianity, is where we die to that degree. I'm going to say this over and over again, and every time that I get a, a, an opportunity to teach, I want to read you this quote. The commandments of God in the Bible are a means of liberation, because through them God calls us to be what He built us to be. See, the scripture to you and me was given so that by it we could live not by the written word. It was by the revelation of the living God, which is the Holy Spirit in us. You might not understand all of this, but trust is needed. And trust is faith. And so therefore I want to end off with Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him and he will make your path straight. I've heard many people today speak to this and saying, I don't understand. I just don't understand. Christianity, to a big degree, cannot be understood with cognitive reasoning. It is a spiritual thing. God says to us, through Paul, that anyone who reads this with a fleshly mindset thinks this is utter nonsense. This was a book written to us over more than 1,500 years more than 40 authors, 66 books combined to tell you and me about Jesus. And Christian, brother and sister in Jesus, we are supposed to allow Jesus to live in me. Yet, says Romans 8 verse 37, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Christianity is to be lived through him. I hope that you will allow just this message to speak to you in a way where you will ask yourself whether your life as a Christian truly does not only resemble, but truly does allow Jesus to live in you. Do you allow Him to control your mind? Do you allow Him to control the outcome of situations? Do you allow Him to control your emotions? Do you choose in line with His fruit? Ask yourself this question this week and allow the Holy Spirit to convict you if you need conviction to maybe make the necessary tweaks in your life. But let us not act Christianity and let us not play church. We were called to be the church with the living God living inside of us. I love you so much and I really hope this inspired you. Bye-bye.